Hi there, it's Karen at Corrie Paper Crafts here. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in central Scotland. Today I thought I'd show you how I made this dinky little box. It holds two green and blacks organic chocolates. Um, these ones here, just like this. And I made it using some of the new products from the new Stampin' Up! annual catalogue which launches just in a couple of days now. I'm filming this on the Sunday before the catalogue goes live on Tuesday so I'm hoping I'll be able to get this video out to you later today, the same day. So this is using the um, Come Sail Away suite and if I could move this over beside Cory to look after it for a minute I'll show you some of the bits if I can just sneak this in. That I've got from the suite. I don't have the whole suite and the only reason that I didn't order the whole suite was because I got the stamp set and the trinkets that match at uh, on stage. You'll have seen that in a previous video if you've watched my other videos. So I've still got a couple of things to get but only a couple of things. So if I could very very quickly just let you see the gorgeous, gorgeous designer series paper. I will take it out of the plastic because you're going to get nothing but glare. So I love this. Um, being from a sailing family, um, I really, really like this this suite. So as always, the papers are double sided. You get two sheets of each paper. So in the back of that one, you have a, a, a sailing map of the world. And I really like this as well some old newspaper cuttings um, with lots of sailing stories and on the back of that some gorgeous ropes and actually if you look and I bring that back in it actually matches the rope stamp as well from the stamp set which is lovely I really like the stripy material. I actually sew tote bags as well and I've got fabric like this that I'm going to make um, for a fundraiser that the sailing club do every year for the Royal National Lifeboat Institute. So I'm going to make some bags with that and I'm going to make some bits and pieces for their stall using this suite as well. Some seaweed or pl underwater plants on the back of that. I really like this too. I love the colour and I love the boats on it and on the back of that you've got some lovely green nautical stripes. Very nautical these stripes here and on the back you've got some uh, nautical instruments for pl plotting your journey and the designer series paper that I've used for my project today is this one, Gorgeous Lighthouses. I don't know if you can see those, they're just beautiful. And on the back that's the, the again, more nautical stripes that I've used for the Bella Band on my box today. So if I could get the paper out of the way, I can then let you see the stamp set again. Absolutely gorgeous. I've got a couple of things that I've already stamped from this and die cut. Um, if I can get a hold of it that is. That's the lighthouse there which is just beautiful. I've actually stamped it in Night of Navy onto very vanilla card just so that the, the background wasn't a stark white and the compass as well. Just lovely. So inside I can let you see that I've already um, used a few and I've popped their labels on the back. These are the new Kling style stamps so they're very very sticky so you need to be really careful when you take them off your block or even out of the box. Um, just very quickly we've got the dies here. <clears throat> Ship's wheel which doesn't match a stamp so you can just cut and um, because they're cut and emboss, they actually emboss your shapes as well as cutting them. The rope as well. Now I did have a little rope here that I could show you. I don't know how well you can see that but it cuts and it embosses the pattern on the dies as well which is great. You've got this die here which will fit round um, your sentiments and a little banner. You've got a couple of boats, two different sizes, um, some hands for your compass, 
um, some seaweed or underwater plants, a nice straight rope die here, um, which you can use to cut out a strip for putting on a card and the anchor which we've also used in today's project which is just lovely so that's very quickly the dies <coughs> and gorgeous baker's twine which is in um oops come off this is night of navy and very vanilla which is just lovely i like that as well and that's what i've popped on the top of my little anchor here and last but not least, and I have shown you these already in a, a previous video, I'll take a couple out, are the little trinkets, some anchors and some ship's wheels. Just beautiful. I've not put one on today's box because I felt it was going to be a little bit too much. So without more chatting and now that I've shown you the suite, what you're going to need for your box today is two pieces of cardstock and I've used Knight of Navy for this and for the base you want a piece which measures four and three sixteenths by three inches and a piece for the lid which measures four and a quarter inches by three and one sixteenth. Um, instead of making the lid larger and the base smaller. I find it works better if I make one edge of my base smaller and one edge of my lid larger. It seems to fit better which is why they've both got odd measurements and I'm sorry about the sixteenths but it's the only way the box really fits together. And you need a piece of this gorgeous designer series paper which measures one and a half inches by five inches for the belly band. So all you need to do, <coughs> pop, pop your cardstock on your scoring board and you're going to score both pieces at seven eighths of an inch on all four sides. So it's quite an easy one to remember um, in terms of the scoring. So all four sides on that piece and seven eighths on all four sides on this piece as well. And that's all your scoring done. So I will get the scoring board out of the way without whacking the tripod. And then all you need to do is fold and burnish on all your score lines on both pieces. And then you're just going to cut your wedges on each corner to make the flaps to stick them both together. So now that I can't remember which is the base and which is the lid, <laughs> you want to cut up these short score lines just to make that, make that horizontal score line on both sides of both pieces. And again, as always, a straight edge on the longer part of your cardstock because this is going to be the bit that's visible. So you want to take the score line off with what will be your flap on the inside and just a wedge on either side and do the same on this corner straight edge removing the score line oops and a wedge on both sides and then turn it round and do the same again on the other side normally when I'm making a square box particularly I turn it round each time and have a wedge on or a flap on each side again straight edge and removing the score line I don't know if you can see the score line on here but on this box it doesn't really matter and if you find it easier to cut this wedge on the outside just turn it around and do it that way so you want to do that on both pieces <coughs> excuse me and then turn it over and bring in your tearing tape and add a piece of tape oops, to each flap. I bring in my trusty ruler as always just to get a straight edge and then I add a smaller piece just on the edge of the tab to make sure that it stays stuck down on the inside of the box. So to save you watching me putting tape, cutting and putting tape on eight different corners. What I've done is I've actually already done it um, to save a bit of time and save you watching me doing all of those which can be a bit boring. 
<coughs> excuse me, oh my hay fever's not great today. So all you want to do is then remove the tape from each of these corners and I'm just going to fold that in because it's overlapping a little bit and then you're going to stick your box together. So what you want to do once you've taken your backing off is you want to bring your straight edge here to meet this folded edge here and that makes a nice crisp corner on your box. So you want to do that on all four corners of both pieces of your box. So that's that one and sometimes you end up with little furry corners <coughs> excuse me um, wrong scissors. just when you've removed your flaps or removed the wet removed rather the wedges from your flaps so if you need to trim them just give them a little trim and like I've said in a previous video just be careful that you don't cut too much off that corner because then you'll end up with a little hole in the corner of your box which doesn't really matter but you don't want to be able to see through any of your corners so again removing the backing and straight edge up to meet the folded edge on each corner of your box and any, bit, any bits of tape that overlap, just press them in. No, don't stick there. And last corner to put together here. And I do see a little furry bit on there and on there. And that's it. So now we can try the box together and see which is the base and which is the lid. And if you hear that, it just fits together perfectly. You don't want it too tight but you don't want it so loose that it falls out. So I now know that this is the lid of my box and I'm just going to bring in my half inch circle punch and oh it's still got a bit of card in it. Really just butting it up more or less to the top of my box here which makes it about halfway and that's just going to punch out a little finger notch so just before I punch I just want to make sure that it's fairly even on either side it doesn't have to be perfect because once the box is together you can't actually see both sides at the same time and then before I do anything else I'm going to pop my two sweeties in and they just fit in there perfectly pop that back together Oops. That's it, and you can hear that smoosh and it doesn't fall out. And then all I'm going to do with my belly band is start about halfway across the bottom of my box and make sure it's fairly straight and just bend that round and give it a bit of a crease and just keep going round all the edges and all the corners until I've wrapped it round and I'm back at the bottom of my box again and it should overlap nicely so all I want to do is then just without creasing it too hard and I do want to make sure this lines up just give it an extra bit of help to emphasise the creases a little bit with my paper folder and again just making sure that it matches up I think I've cut this just a little bit squint um, I cut this last night just as I was getting over a migraine so it maybe wasn't the best time <laughs> to be doing that so just make sure that it all fits round again and rather than having the join closer to one side than the other what I tend to do is just bring the shorter edge over the longer edge if that makes sense and pop a bit of tape on there but all it does it's just for aesthetic purposes really it just makes the the join in the middle rather than being to one side or the other that's just me you don't have to be as um, pernickety as that and then a bit of tearing tape and hopefully I'm not getting my head right underneath the camera just as close to the edge as you can without overlapping the edge and a little snip or your trusty ruler to get a straight edge <laughs> give that a bit of a 
smoosh and I think I'll take the tape backing off just now um, and wrap it round again and join it together without pulling it too tight and it should match up fairly perfectly so I'll just pop that in the middle and all I need to do is add my anchor um, which I did mm, I did print or, or stamp rather and die cut earlier and I've lost it I think I've knocked it out of the way when I was showing you the bits of the sweet so if you just bear with me I'll pause the video and I'll go and look for it I think it's maybe on the floor I'll be right back and I'm back sorry about that it had flown off the desk and couldn't have got any more or any further under the desk if it tried so here it is here um, I don't have an awful lot of room on my desk to show you how die cuts from the using the big shop because I've not got a lot of space but I will show you how well it stamps so using a piece of very vanilla and my knight of navy ink i've already mounted the anchor stamp onto a block this is a c block um so just ink up my stamp and then stamp it onto the card and these are what we call distinctive stamps so if I hold that up and hopefully you can see it the detail in that is amazing and that's all from one stamp I've only just inked it up and stamped onto my cardstock nothing else I'll just give that stamp a clean sorry if I'm shuggling the um, tripod and before I put my hand or my elbow or something in it I'll get rid of my ink and if I bring in the anchor die I'll just let you see how beautifully these now line up so instead of before where you had to make sure that you had the right amount of gap or white space round your shapes before now you just line up with the image because the way that Stampin' Up! are now making their dies is if you see you've got this little edge here which works all that white space or empty space out for you so it's just fab but they're very delicate so you do have to be very careful with them so we'll get that out of the way get that out of the way and here's the one that I did sort earlier so if I grab a tiny piece of baker's twine and fold that in half and instead of trying to bring the two tails through it's actually easier to just pop the folded edge through from the front to the back and then feed the tails through the loop from the front to the back so that you get this effect here and then I just want to trim the ends down a little bit because I don't need them too long and that's my anchor ready to pop onto my box now I did have to cut some dimensionals in half yesterday because I can't find my mini dimensionals so um, we'll cut these two I think so just a snip right up the middle oh that's perfect let that fell off and a snip right up the middle of here and it might be easier to use your paper snips and just grab a little bit of dimensional for this bit let's use the oops that didn't stick because the bottom is still attached oh it's gonna be one of those days I can tell that's better now so pop that on there and hopefully this bit will come off the backing paper this time and pop that little bit on the bottom here and one more piece if I can get it off of the backing yep 
and that just sits nicely in the middle. And then all you need to do is pop the backing off of each of your dimensionals and bring in your box and pop that in the middle of the belly band. There we go. Excuse my phone buzzing in the background and that's it. So there we have two little boxes each with a couple of green and black chocolates in them and that's it for now. Hopefully I'll see you again very soon. Take care. Bye bye for now.